Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the OnePlus Nord N200. This is an affordable Android smartphone that's priced at around 240 bucks, making it one of the least expensive 5G compatible phones that you can pick up. And in the US at least, T-Mobile has actually gone a bit of a partnership with OnePlus phones, the N200 being just a little more powerful than the N100 that doesn't have 5G, it's a 4G LTE device, and also has a slightly older processor, which is the Snapdragon 460, versus on this one, it is rocking the Snapdragon 480. And it is interesting to observe how OnePlus used to be a very enthusiast brand. You had to get an invite code to even purchase one of their phones exclusively online, but these days it's much easier to get your hands on one. And as a reminder, the Nord lineup from OnePlus is representative of their more affordable, budget-conscious phones. So we're not talking about a flagship killer here, but it will still serve you well enough if all you need is a lightweight device and you don't want to spend an arm or a leg. Packaging here is very well done, just says Nord, kind of a quick start guide along with the SIM ejector tool. You also have access to a 18 watt charging adapter. It's nice to see in the box, even though it's not the fastest charging rate, still it will juice up the very large 5,000 milliamp hour capacity pack in here in under two hours. You also have access to just a standard USB type C charging cable that is accented red in classic OnePlus fashion. Before we dive in too deep, one of the things I want to point out is there's a lot of deals surrounding this phone on T-Mobile here in the US. Uh, for example, even if you are a prepaid pay-as-you-go customer due to the 3G sunset that's occurring right now, T-Mobile is offering uh, many customers a free phone to upgrade and continue using their services. And there's other reoccurring deals as well for other customers on various plans, whether it's getting a new line or trading in their phone for a free OnePlus Nord N200. But still, even if you're purchasing this phone upright or unlocked to use on any other cellular network, I would say for the price range of around $200, it still presents itself as a decent budget smartphone. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's take a closer look at the design. I would say that OnePlus has done a great job here with making the phone look more expensive than it really is. Sure, it's not constructed out of glass or aluminum in terms of the rail and the back, it is just a polycarbonate plastic, but it does feel like a very rigid plastic. The matte treatment also means it doesn't really attract fingerprints, which is great. It's pretty grippy and doesn't feel cheap or hollow at all. I think part of that weight and solidness is due to that large 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery, which is definitely one of the highlights of this phone. And coupled with the energy efficient Snapdragon 480, which is a 8 nanometer chipset, it will more than last you over two days of continuous usage, so over eight hours of screen on time. Design language definitely fits in with other phones from the OnePlus family, including the OnePlus 7 Pro, which we did a revisited review on just a few days back. Uh, but the blue on here just is a little bit more deep. There is a little bit of a camera bump on the rear though, which I do wish would be flat, uh, but it is what it is, and it is flanked by three camera sensors, which are really just so-so. There is a primary 13 megapixel camera, and there's also a 2 megapixel depth sensor for bokeh shots and another 2 megapixel macro shot for close-up images. I do wish one of them could have been a wide angle instead. I think that would be more useful, but like I said, it's kind of hard to complain too much at this price. Also similar to the 7 Pro, there is a subtle gradient finish on the rails where it's a little lighter at the top and gets darker in blue towards the bottom. So this subtle transition effect shows some pretty good attention to detail. You'll also notice on the right hand edge, there's a power key that dubs as a fingerprint scanner, pretty convenient. And at the very bottom here, there's the standard type C port for charging and data. And yes, there is also a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's also a loudspeaker. It is a single speaker on this phone though, so you won't find a stereo set with with the earpiece. All of the placement of the keys feel pretty tactile and responsive. Considering the phone has a 6.5 inch display, it is relatively large, but again, everything can be easily reached with one hand, which is good. And there's also just the SIM card tray, taking a nano SIM along with a micro SD slot for expanding the 64 gigs of built-in storage. Now on the front, you will find access to a hole punch display with a 16 megapixel selfie camera. You'll also find the earpiece, pretty minimal bezel, 
nozzles, although there is a little bit of a larger chin at the base, uh, considering it's an LCD IPS display, but this is still a very good screen for the price, considering, again, this is a budget phone. It is rocking a full HD plus resolution, has a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and also is a 90 hertz refresh rate panel. So everything looks very smooth when it comes to scrolling and animations, going down longer lists because of that faster refresh rate. Colors do look really good, and it still retains an ambient light sensor as well, which can automatically detect the brightness of your surroundings. Other nifty features, including double tap to wake as well as sleep. Overall, it's an attractive looking design and doesn't look too out of place compared to their more expensive flagships. Now, running the show, we do have Oxygen OS, which is a super clean version of Android right now based on Android 11 for the N200, but OnePlus have guaranteed an update to Android 12 when that drops later on, although you won't likely see another OS update past that, unfortunately, as a budget smartphone. However, they do have have three years of guaranteed security updates, so you'll still be getting those security patches uh, as they roll along. Otherwise, it is flanked by 4 gigs of RAM, which is also for the most part sufficient on a budget smartphone. And though you won't find Qi wireless charging nor IP rating for water resistance, you do get built-in GPS along with NFC. So services like Google Pay and contactless payment can definitely be handled. In terms of Antutu benchmarks, you'll find that this is actually more powerful than the Snapdragon 625 from just two or three years back, uh, which was a mid-tier chipset. So overall, this is very efficient. Closer look at the UI, if you have ever used another OnePlus phone, you'll be right at home. You can change all of these icons and further customize it under settings. OnePlus has all of their versions of utility tools and apps, which has slightly larger, more playful animations. It is a pretty coherent and attractive UI, in my personal opinion. You can also drag down to access kind of a quick shade that tells you the weather, as well as some recent apps that you've been using. You have access to full screen gestures for navigation, of course, and all the standard Google apps, including access to the Play Store. Oxygen OS skin is still among one of the best, closest to what a Pixel can offer in terms of the fluidity and just the overall cleanness and consistency. Working very well in terms of features at least, it's nothing really that you can't do on here, which you find on the more expensive OnePlus phones, you get that same Oxygen OS experience. Now, areas where, of course, OnePlus had to cut down a few corners in order to get the cost down lower would have to be perhaps haptics being one of the more tangible elements. It just rattles a little bit more, but you can always turn it off and use sound instead if you prefer. Let's jump into the camera, and this is one area where I have to say that, uh, like the haptics, it's probably the one weakness or a corner that OnePlus had to cut. Primarily, it's just you don't get a ton of detail with that 13 megapixel sensor, and also the two other lenses don't do a whole lot. This particular macro lens, it tells you have to be at least four centimeters away from your object. So you can tell that if I try to go in a little close to this penny, it looks pretty decent. But if you try to get in even closer, it becomes more fuzzy. If you are using the primary camera, the autofocus camera, and you just get a little bit further away, honestly, you're looking at a pretty similar result. So uh, overall, I just find that the macro lens, it doesn't get you as close to your subjects as other macro lens enabled phones I've seen in the past. Otherwise though, you do have tricks on here, including HDR, which does boost the exposure and challenging its scenarios. There is also an AI mode, a feature that was once reserved for flagships. It's now trickled down even on these basic phones. So it has pretty good scene detection that will try and make the colors more saturated depending on what you're shooting at. You can record video up to full HD, but no 4K unfortunately. So reviewing some of the images here, for the most part, it is a very colorful and saturated looking result, particularly if you're using HDR. But again, just because of the 13 megapixels, you can't really zoom in quite as much and really crop in a bit of noise and start to creep in, particularly in nighttime environments, you have to hold quite still because there is no OIS. But still for, again, a budget camera, it looks all right, I have to say, for just sharing on social media, can still get you some very pleasant and vibrant looking results. Of course, if you're in daytime environments, the results are even better, and it also just makes the display, again, really pop, and you can tell that as an IPS screen, I think OnePlus have done an awesome job here. It has very wide viewing angles. The HDR, I would say, can be a little on the aggressive side, but still looks good. Now, here's another example of the macro versus the regular lens. So this is captured using the 13 megapixel regular camera, and then this is with the 2 megapixel macro. So again, 
that macro it doesn't really get you as close as you would think, but it is what it is. Now here's some other examples of the sky and clouds. Zoom might be one other area where it's not quite as strong at if you start using the digital zoom. Uh, the further that you get into your subjects, of course, you'll see a bit more of softness in the image pop up because of the 13 megapixels compared to on some phones these days having 48 or even 64. Uh, but overall, it's definitely not bad. Now here's a demo of what it's like to watch back videos on this phone with the built-in speaker. So overall, it's not a shabby sounding speaker, I have to admit, even though it is just a single unit, it doesn't distort too much at higher volumes and actually reaches a pretty good uh, overall comfortable listening experience just for short video clips. Uh, but you can always improve that obviously by plugging in headphones or using Bluetooth. There is Bluetooth 5.1, so it connects perfectly fine to any wireless buds that you may have lying around. No real complaints there. And again, in terms of the connectivity, everything is pretty good in terms of the Wi-Fi reception strength as well as with uh, also cellular, obviously with 5G. It is generally quite fast to buffer and play things along. So not really too many complaints here, I have to say. Of course, some slight moments of hesitation if you are opening up apps at the first time and doing a lot of let's say, heavy multitasking behind the scenes, you'll find some occasional moments of jumpiness, which is expected after all from a budget phone, but overall it is doing very well. Again, OnePlus is owned by the same parent company as Oppo, which is more well known across Asia. So it's not too surprising that the phone in terms of the specs and design isn't completely unique. So Oppo does have the A54 5G, which came out a little bit earlier. That's essentially the same exact phone as this N200, but you can also consider that device if you are a international shopper uh, because they are identical almost in terms of these specs. Now anyways, here's a quick web browsing test. If we jump into something like The Verge, you can tell there how pages are surprisingly fast to load. And again, the Snapdragon 480 is just so energy efficient. It never gets hot, it never thermal throttles, it barely gets warm even if you're gaming and running it for a few hours. In terms of reading back articles, it works perfectly fine. Things are quite sharp because of the resolution here. Now, with that being said, perhaps the RAM optimization, even though it is four gigabytes, could be a little bit improved, surprisingly. I have found moments where if I was jumping between five or six tabs, it would occasionally refresh one of those tabs. It's kind of hard to pick up right now, of course, as we're filming, but I did want to point that out. Now, as far as the essentials are concerned when it comes to making calls, of course, that's an important tenet of any phone at the end of the day. Thankfully, it's also an area where there's not much negative to say. The callers sounded perfectly clear on the earpiece, and the microphone was also good in terms of picking up my voice. So I think last but not least, we'll just briefly touch on, let's say, light gaming. And the 480, even though it is a much more powerful chip than previous generation ones in this 400 series, still can't expect it to outperform a Snapdragon 800 series phone. And when it comes to that, such as playing back the super heavy and 3D demanding titles and games, you'll still find occasional moments of slower animations. But for lighter gaming in general, everything works perfectly fine. And like I said, there is no thermal throttling, so performance is pretty consistent. So here's another example, Sky, which is a fairly graphically demanding title with 3D animations, but you can see how everything here still looks very good when it comes to movement and just cropping around, walking around. Things are still quite smooth and it's an immersive and enjoyable experience, again, thanks to the large display that we have here. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the OnePlus Nord N200 5G. I know that on one hand, there are a lot of OnePlus fans from back in the day which are a little disappointed with the Nord series because they look at it as OnePlus perhaps selling out in a way, no longer making true flagship killers. But in this day and age, honestly, it's just harder and harder to continue offering really top of line performance at rock bottom prices as phones in general have just become so much more expensive. So it is interesting to see how they've diversified their portfolio. And I have to say that the Nord N200 is a fairly acceptable budget phone. Again, considering the price, uh, the really impressive battery life coupled with the 5G capabilities. Less than a year ago, 5G just sounded like a super premium feature that honestly not a lot of people cared about. But now we are getting to this day and age 
where it can be found at super low price points. And I suppose that's for the better because we do get faster speeds and just overall improved data connectivity. Overall, I think makes it a pretty attractive option if you are on a budget and looking for just a basic phone. It definitely takes a lot of those boxes. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the OnePlus Nord in 200.